Hello everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Grenoble Ecole de Management and we're going to be talking about the MSc Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, the ISC. In order to talk about it, I have the pleasure to welcome the Program Director, Lisa Jane Perrault. Hello Lisa Jane, how are you? Hi, lovely to be here. Nice to, nice to meet you, Guillaume. And uh, we're also welcoming one of your students, Dina Oceron. Hello Dina, how are you? Hello, thank you so much for having us tonight. Well, thanks to the two of you for coming here. You're both here to answer my questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. I believe, Lisa Jane, it's you who's going to have to introduce us to, the, to this MSc, to the ISC. 60 seconds. Are you ready? I'm ready. Then I'm listening. Okay. So the MSc in Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship is a highly innovative program and interactive, uh, focusing obviously on innovation. Uh, as we say, innovate or die. Um, mm -hmm. so, so in fact, uh, we explore through gamification, through design thinking, through uh, innovation models uh, and frameworks, why and how businesses succeed or fail. Then obviously we have the strategic part, which is an exploration of, of again, how do businesses work? How should we uh, develop business, whether it be a startup, a scale up or a multinational company? The program is over two years with two internships potentially and also with an international exchange if, if we like. Obviously also the entrepreneurial mindset is a prerequisite and uh, this is something that we develop uh, throughout the program for the students. All right, perfect, almost perfect. Let's move on to the first question. Innovation, strategy and entrepreneurship, a little bit of everything or an expert at everything? Aha. Um, good question. I, w I wouldn't say um, you automatically become an expert. Uh, you've got in-depth uh, modules on the innovation, uh, all things in interlock, and also with the entrepreneurship, where we uh, explore new venture planning, the opportunities, entrepreneurship also, um, ideation and, and innovation, and, and a lot of testing of all these hypotheses. So, uh, for example, this year, Dina took the, the challenge to do something more and to become an innovation catalyst and work with the Gem Labs, and so explored that to become I'd say yes, an expert in, in innovation, but it's always up to the student to go that step farther if they would like to. But at least there's definitely knowledge about all three sectors. Dina, do I need to have a company project or a business plan if I want to apply to this MSc? Of course not. So basically you come here if you wish to establish a company. Uh, I came here for that reason. I came for the entrepreneurship reason, but then I fell in love with the innovation and the strategy along the way. So no, you don't have to like have a company at the beginning and you don't have to want to have a company because all the program together, like the melting of the program is like amazing. So, so what do you talk about during the interview? Most of the time during the interviews, we, you talk about the professional project that you want to have. And you can say, well, I don't know yet, but it will be linked to innovation, entrepreneurship strategy. Is that enough? Uh, so basically, I didn't have an interview to, uh, to, to the admission of JAM. Uh, I, was, I only had the three uh, questions to complete, yes. And because I have prior experience in consultancy and in HR, and I have six years of experience, so basically, I think that was the, re the reason why I didn't have an interview at the beginning. OK, so I'm going to ask Lisa Jane for the people who don't have a, a six-year work experience in the background, uh, what should they say or what should they yes, tell the jury about their professional project if they don't need to come with a specific plan? Definitely. In fact, the, the idea is not... The, the MSc in Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship is not only geared towards creating companies. Uh, you don't have to have your own uh, company. But what you do have to have is an entrepreneurship mindset, something that you you want to help build things, help uh, see things in a different way, have a, a lean approach. So what do we say in the, the interview? I'd, uh, I'd advise students who are interested by this to focus on, on, on their professional project, what they'd like to explore, what, uh, what makes them curious, what makes them want to, to go deeper into what they're, uh, they're looking for. And so apart from the motivation, what is it that you look at the most during the admission process? And I'm not talking about the interview. Before the interview, there are the three short essays that Dina mentioned. And what are you going to look at? The grades, 
mostly? Obviously the grades, but definitely not only. Um, I've decided to interview everybody this time because what I'm looking for is, is people who, who manage to communicate their, their authenticity, their, their genuine interest in, in exploring innovation, in doing something new, uh, in perhaps creating something, but not necessarily. Um, I'm looking for curious minds. Any way they can show that is, is good for me. Dina, do you have a curious mind? Of course I do. Okay, could you, could you prove it? Could you tell, you know, what did you say, what would you say if you were doing an interview and they were like, well, I'm Lisa Jane and what's very important for me is to have like a student with a curious mind. What would you say? What should the student say? Uh, I can prove what I did actually not say that beforehand because when I got into jam I wanted to go and dive into the gamification. So to do so I went and I knocked doors and I met the people. I was curious enough. I was uh, uh, searching all around the campus to find who is uh, the expert in gamification and I found it and I went there and I'm working now with them. So. And what, what advice could you give a student watching for what the advice? three short essays? Because you didn't have the interview, but you have the three short essays. What should they say apart from be yourself or just be honest, all right? Uh, something, I don't know, more specific, what you have to go through? I wouldn't say be yourself, I would say be bold because you right. have to be different. You have to dare to be different in these kind of programs. You're, you're, you're going into the entrepreneurship world. You can't be like everyone else. You have to be seen somehow. So be, be bold. Be bold to, to, to be present in entrepreneurship world. So it would be like Steve Jobs, say like, stay hungry, stay foolish? Of course. <laughs> okay. Always. Okay, so that would be the. How would you describe the atmosphere in your class? Wow, <laughs> it's a great atmosphere actually. We're, uh, we're th from 13 nationalities. Uh, we come from different places, different personalities. Uh, yet we feel like we know each other from long time. Uh, we're preparing now for the Berlin trip and we're so excited to be like for one week all together in one place. And the atmosphere is just perfect in terms of professional work, in terms of uh, uh, going out, in terms of everything. Okay, so you, you like it and it's just, it's not just your opinion, I mean, it's, it's not like you like everybody yeah. but nobody likes you, it's more like everybody like each oh, other. I hope so, okay. I, ho I hope everyone likes me. <laughs> okay, um, Lisa Jane, the, on the website it's written, the program may be subject to change. What won't change, what will or what's new? What's new? Uh, lots of exciting things. First of all, we're going to uh, move to a program over two years. So uh, that gives the students time to be to spend more time together. So the first six months in class with core modules where in fact there's uh, the possibility to, to, um, to also study on those with other masters and then come back for the cohort for the for the specializations. So we've I'd say rework the specializations on both the digital, the strategic and the entrepreneurship and the entre innovation side uh, to make it more um, possible to go in depth, I'd say to, to have a project that, that runs through several modules. What else is different? The possibility to go abroad for an international exchange for a semester. Uh, we're reserving that to the best students, so they have to have a very good academic track record um, to be able to do that. During GEM or even before GEM? No, during. Okay. Let's say uh, what counts is their results, how they perform on the program. Okay. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, no. I think uh, that was that was clear. The other thing that we're changing is we're we're changing the um, the way we organise the live business case to make it even more challenging. Uh, and I think we'll be we're trying to link those with incubators around Europe. So really working with the startups. So you spoke about the entrepreneurship side. Uh, you don't have to bring your own project. You can work with somebody else who has a project that they would like to explore. And, and regarding, the, regarding sorry, the first part of my question, the, the program may be subject to change on, on, the, on the website, like how students will know what won't change from what will change. It's just that the website is everything you've said and it's in a construction, un, under construction. Is that what it is? Uh, yes, it's uh, everything that okay. I've just said, and uh, I've now got to go and write it down and uh, put it on the website. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Is a two-year master program better than a one-year master program? I'll let you know once we've done that. Um, one of the main reasons we've changed it is to allow a, a more in-depth approach around the research and to also uh, hopefully be accredited. Um, so that's one of the one of the reasons that we've chosen to, to have a two-year program. Have you worked with the, the GEM alumni network in order to improve this master? Definitely. Uh, um, we, we've spoken to, to 
previous students. We've also benchmarked, obviously, other competitors. We've spoken to current students. Um, it's been, it's been a, an, without forgetting the faculty who, who've been delivering this program for, for several years and, and who know what's at the, the forefront of, of entrepreneurship and innovation and, and also, of course, sustainability, which is one of the, the main, um, uh, main themes that will be present throughout the program. Tina, would you say that Grenoble Ecole de Management has a strong link with their, their alumni, with their current students? Because, like, for example, as the alumni for um, changing the whole program, is that something they would do in some other areas, for example? I don't know, for like job opportunity, for student life, yes, of course. for courses, for I teachers, remember maybe, I the know. first outing I had in Grenoble was an alumni event, actually, that uh, Lisa Jane and other like alumni, uh, I, I think, uh, from the alumni people, they, mm -hmm. they created this event. So basically we met lots of people. And from now on, each project we have, if we need any interview, it's very advisable to go and to search for anyone who, like any company, with an alumni uh, in it, so we could reach directly to them and have the interview and so on. So, yeah. Becomes tomorrow's game changer. Does that ring a bell or not? It's, it, it, it's fine if it doesn't. <laughs> it's on your website as well, and it's like one of the catchphrases. And my question about that is, what's the most disruptive aspect of this MSc, according to you, Dina? Disruptive aspect of this MSc? Well, I would say I came here to uh, create a company. I'm out of this MSc. I created with a classmate a game, which is a start of something. And it's very disruptive to me because this game is like a disruption in terms of we're going to Berlin in the study trip and instead of the companies coming and presenting their company, they're coming and they're playing with us. So we're changing the whole way uh, the companies are working with students and we make it more engaging and dynamic. So to me, this is real disruptive. And maybe I can have your opinion on that question. What is the most disruptive aspect of your MC? In part, uh, I, I really agree with what Dina said. It's uh, the interaction uh, between the students and the uh, and the professors and and also the the alumni to to, to change things. So, for example, uh, disruptive for the study trip, it's the students that must decide what the theme of the, of the week is going to be. So, uh, if I, if my memory serves me right, it's uh, why um, what is the impact of failure on innovation. Uh, that we've chosen to explore in Berlin, and um, and the, the idea is for the students to reach out to the companies to manage to convince them to share their expertise and knowledge, and to come and uh, and meet with us. So alumni, professionals, uh, uh, startups, incubators. So uh, disruptive. It's it's not me organising for them. It's them organising for me. That would be a very disruptive aspect, effectively. And that would be the first cliche. It's not because you're the teacher that you, you teach. Your students can <laughs> also teach, I guess. And in order to discover other cliches, let's move on to the next session, the cliches. So the cliches are about preconceptions, ideas that you might have had before applying or once you've applied. Dina, what would be the first cliche that comes to your mind when I mention your MSc or mention, I don't know, Grenoble, France, you name uh, it? I'll talk about the uh, MSc. Okay. So basically, I thought the courses will be too theoretical, which was not the case at all. They were very practical. We had 25 team works, which is a lot till now. And yes. So the, 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 the cliche to you was that you thought it would be all about theory? Yeah. And there was a lot of, of, of practice. practice yeah. Okay, so you have what, li life business case? Life business case. The game study uh, trip, for example, study, or the study yeah, trip. Yeah, exactly. And the, 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 the presentations we have, like each class, we have presentations with the group work, and we have to do it practically, and not only like study books and stuff like that. Do you work with companies as well? Do you have link with companies? Do you of talk course. to companies? Yes. Uh, we have a lot of links with companies because lots of uh, uh, projects require us to interview lots of companies, so yes. So that will be another practical aspect. Exactly. All right. Thank you, Dina. So it's a pr it's practical. It's not just about theory. Is it Jane? For me, uh, let's talk about Grenoble and international. So I remember one of the first times that I, I, I worked in Grenoble right at the beginning before I was program director, uh, and I'd m my role was to to meet with companies and to to share about Grenoble economic management, and they'd say, Grenoble, where's that? <laughs> 
And so, Where is it? so exactly. <laughs> so putting it on the map, putting it on the map. We had a, a session at the beginning of this program uh, from uh, um, Development uh, Corporation, and it was absolutely amazing. The statistics, the number of research industries, the number of startups, the number of new technologies, the number of uh, companies that have gone international. Um, and not forgetting that uh, there's the, the nanotech uh, hub right at the end of the road. There's the CIRA, so for energy. Uh, Grenoble is, it, you, you, you hear all languages everywhere. So it's really, uh, it's not just a little place in the middle of the mountains, which it's, it's great because you've got all these wonderful uh, hiking things to, to discover and skiing, but it's also an extremely dynamic international innovation hub. Well, speaking of Grenoble, it's not only in Grenoble, it's also in Berlin. That's true. So when does a student need to choose and how do you make the most or the best sorry, out of those two worlds? Um, so the, the student can choose right up until I'd say they've uh, made their first payment. So the program is exactly the same in Grenoble or in Berlin. Uh, however, uh, the interaction with the local companies or the uh, live business cases will be different. Um, there's a much stronger student life in Grenoble because you've got far more programs, whereas we're working with a partner campus in, uh, in Berlin. So it's very much more geared towards international uh, and independent students. So you have to know what you're looking for. Okay, so you, you have to pick one of them. You can't be have like one no. year in, in Grenoble and the other year in, in, in Berlin. Not yet, not yet. Not yet. Uh, All right, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Who knows, who, who knows when that will happen? But for example, this year we've decided with the, the Grenoble cohort to go to Berlin. And in fact, the, uh, the Berlin cohort came to Grenoble and, and Paris. And do you have, Dina, do you have any connection with the, uh, you're from Grenoble? I mean, uh, you have MSc, you're spending yes. in Grenoble, okay. Do you have any connection with the Berlin campus or is it uh, just like two separate groups? And it's just basically just divides by two the opportunity of having mm. like a good social life. Yeah, we don't have a lot of communication between us, but now since we have the study trip in Berlin, like we had this talk with them to ask them about restaurants and so on, and we're gonna meet with them in Berlin for sure. That was the deal. All right, MSc Innovation. I can't help but asking you, Lisa Jane, what's the most innovative aspect of this MSc as well? You, we mentioned the most disruptive, and I, I need to ask you. If okay. it's all about innovation, what is innovative? A hint could be the Gem Lab. I don't know if it okay, could be uh, the beginning of an answer. Yes, so, so the Gem Labs uh, obviously offer an absolutely fabulous opportunity to, to explore all the cutting edge research with digitalization, the connected shop, and uh, all the other different sort of uh, uh, screens and the, the environment where, where we do our innovation classes. Um, but it's also innovative in that we, we, nothing is static. Uh, somebody comes up with an idea, even if it's through, throughout the year, if there's somebody willing to do it on top of, we'll, we'll do that on top of. Dina, I've heard that your school is a bit like Hogwarts in Harry Potter. <laughs> Why? How come? Can you tell us about it? So that would be Professor McGonagall, I guess. <laughs> Why would you say that? Uh, well, in order to help you, I think you, you quoted Dumbledore's yeah. motto, who was like, help will be given for those who ask for it. This is exactly what I said earlier, because when I wanted to get into something, I went and I knocked the door and obviously it was what I wanted just came real because I asked for it. The same goes for Lisa Jane. Whenever you want something, you can reach her anytime. You can go to her and she's here to listen to you and to know exactly what you want and to make it happen if it's possible, of course. All so right. this is why I say that you need to knock on doors, you need to ask for help if you really need help, otherwise you won't get it. But if you ask for it, you will get it? Yes, of course. Okay, and that, that, would you say that makes her a good program, her, does that make Lisa Jane, sorry, a good program director? What makes her a good program director actually is the fact that she knows each student, their capabilities, and like she takes the student and she builds upon them even if they don't know their their true worth, if I can say that. So she knows that, she listens very well, and she finds the opportunity for each student perfectly. So they, re they reveal you to yourself in some way? Yeah, to myself and to my uh, classmates as well, because yeah. she knows where to put each person of the, of the team in yeah. a perfect way, so we all, we all are synchronized together. Yeah, I think it's Nietzsche who said, become who you are. 
So, <laughs> so, so Lisa Jane would be like, like Nietzsche. She helps you become who you are. Exactly. Okay, okay a, a mix between <gasps> Nietzsche and Professor McGonagall, then I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good mix. Well, a good mix. that's something to live up to. <laughs> it is. It is. So what makes you a good program director? Because we, we always ask students, prove of your value or prove your worth or just why would you be a good fit for this program? And why would you be a good fit for the, the position program director for this program? Specifically for this program, we spoke about uh, innovation earlier. Uh, it's always testing. Uh, and uh, the entrepreneurship motto, motto is fail fast and start again. Uh, and I'd say that's something that uh, I'm challenged to do. So, so if something doesn't work, find a plan B, find a plan C, find a plan, uh, plan D. And I'm very lucky in that we have an absolutely ex exceptional faculty team, uh, great professors, very, very good researchers, um, and that we, we have that pleasure of working together to make things better if they're, they're not up to par. I forgot to ask, do I need to know any German for the Berlin campus? You do not. You need to know only English. Uh, that was a, a preconception I had because I, I've, I've <laughs> been over to, to Berlin, I think it was four times in the first three months for, for a few days. And, uh, and I, I was really surprised by how international uh, Berlin is. And uh, I'd say that there's a very much a, a mirror effect between Grenoble and, um, and, and Berlin, very much both innovation hubs and, and tech focus. Okay, there will be another cliche then. Definitely. <laughs> All right. How can you teach soft skills such as innovation, strategy, or even the entrepreneurial spirit? I've heard that you were born an entrepreneur, you don't become one. But I guess it's wrong with the pedagogy you use. Can you well, tell I, us about I'd it? Well, I'd say that there's a lot of teachers that would contest that you can't teach <laughs> uh, entrepreneurial skills. Um, we, we have modules such as managerial creativity, um, uh, managing global teams, uh, reflexivity, all these are uh, uh, elements where students are put into situations where they have to think of how they're behaving or how they're, 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 they're learning and to, to break down the, the, the framework. So it's a very conscious, uh, conscious approach. Uh, and uh, and I, I think there's definitely recipes. Then it's a question of practice makes progress. Not, not perfect, but practice makes progress. <laughs> and then you fail. And, and then, then you start and again. Then you try again. Okay. It's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Has, it, has those uh, courses helped you? Because like you didn't come, you didn't enter the MSc, w wanting to create your own company, and now you want. Would you say there's a link between the courses you you followed and your new professional goals? They helped you in a way to give you the right path to think, the methodologies and the know-how, the right people to talk to, and all of these. So basically, if I want to say now I can build my own, com my own company, I would be lying. No, I can't. But I have all the tools that will make me be able to build the company. Lisa Jane, uh, how does your program take into consideration the environment and the impact of the economic activity? Um, so basically, that's that's sustainability is one of the key elements within uh, within GEM, uh, within Grenoble Culture Management, and specifically within the program. So we talk about sustainable leadership. Uh, the live business cases that I'm uh, exploring for next year will be focusing on either social innovation or uh, elements to do with climate control, um, zero waste, uh, or, or or other challenges. Um, this year we, we, had, uh, we had, for example, live business cases with uh, a company in Singapore who was helping to integrate ethically migrant workers. We were working with uh, a live business case in, in Berlin uh, with an absolutely brilliant new, uh, new technology uh, for creating a framework for children to walk, integrating AI and uh, allowing parents to, to, uh, to not have back pain and the children to have their, their hands and not to be holding on to some kind of uh, crutch approach. So sustainability, I'd say, is, is something that runs through, it's a thread that runs through all the modules and they will be treated within innovation, within strategy and also within entrepreneurship. All right, all geared towards the... Definitely. Okay. Making the world a better place and keeping it a better place. Yeah, it's all about keeping it. Dina, what's been the, the biggest challenge so far that you faced, biggest even challenge. if you haven't finished yet? I would say that the course was really intensive. So basically, we had lots of stuff to do on the plate. We have the LBC going on, the different projects. Uh, so that was like a, a hectic thing 
for the first semester. And then maybe for the group work, uh, having to deal with different nationalities, different personalities each time, it was a very big challenge, but it also made you makes you discover yourself more and makes you a better person. Is there a reason why a student wouldn't want to come to this MSc? Uh, yes, I think if they don't know their, uh, uh, how to say it, uh, if they don't want to change, if they want to stay where they are, where they are. If they want to, okay, if they're yeah. not open to changes, they yeah. should just, no, they, they shouldn't apply. Exactly, they oh. shouldn't apply and they won't apply. Other than that, each, each student would really love to be in this program. Many company dies within the very first few months following their creation. How do you help your students make sure their company won't be one of those? Is it Jane? I know it's not just about entrepreneurship, <laughs> but it could be like, how do you help them within their career as well, for the whole career, and especially with entrepreneurs as well? I'd say it's being able to ask the right questions and to, to forecast and to look permanently towards the, the future. And also to use uh, the network that's at their disposition, the experts that they have. So in fact, we have some absolutely fabulous alumni, some great researchers. And so what we teach is, is to students to also ask the questions before it's too late. Think of every single scenario envisageable to brainstorm and to work with one another and that uh, synergy between the groups rather than just our work in my own uh, makes a big difference. And what, what sort of things do graduates do go on uh, to do afterwards? Are they all, because like the cliche would be they're all going to become entrepreneur, but I guess they could become many other things like we mentioned through the whole mm -hmm. interview. So what kind of job, what kind of position would they have? Um, I found that recently there's a real tendency toward product marketing, so product ownership, uh, the, the technical side. Also, uh, surprisingly enough, a lot in, in, in business development, uh, digital analysts, um, consultants, big time. Uh, also, uh, whether it be for, for strategy, sustainability, finance, or, 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 or innovation, if I've not already said that. Um, but um, I'd say that the, the job at their, um, uh, that they choose afterwards is extremely varied. Let's talk about student life now. It's all going to be about you, Dina, because <laughs> you are the student life here. When it comes to student life, what do you do outside of class? Well, Grenoble, you can do lots of things if you don't hike and ski. But basically, we go out a lot for beers. We go for clubs. Uh, we go, like, if it's not raining, we can sit in the park and have a little picnic uh, and study. <laughs> so you have a good student life. You would say you yes. have a good student life. Is it only with the people from your MSc? Is it from... All from all uh, Grenoble Ecole de Management? Uh, no, it's all from, from all Ecole de Grenoble Management, but mostly with the ISC program, of course. But we like have lots of uh, uh, other uh, companies from the MBA, from the MH, uh, MHR, and uh, lots of other com uh, programs. And does the school help you, I don't know, find an accommodation or for your, on your, for your daily life as well, for your student life, I mean, not just for your academic life? Uh, Grenoble is really small to to be to, to want help in your daily life. But for the accommodation, uh, the program uh, has. Uh, uh, at first, we have a regional uh, program manager who talked to us and who like uh, gave us all the accommodation that are present in Grenoble. And it wasn't for me a problem at all. I found an accommodation very easily, and I'm very comfortable uh, living there. And uh, uh, and well, two more questions. The last one. Um, well, before the last one. It, is Grenoble far from Paris? I mean, if you're in Grenoble, do you miss Paris? Or if you're in Grenoble, you're like, I'm in the city that has been described, it's international enough, like we've, we've said already, and I don't need to go to Paris. Uh, Grenoble is not a small city, but it's not a big one. It's a medium one. You can find everything you want there. Uh, but the city is different. If you want to go uh, partying more, if you want to see more people, uh, uh, very uh, big streets, you come to Paris. It takes only three hours in TGV, which is not very far. Uh, but you can find everything in Grenoble. So, so it's the best of two worlds. Yeah, exactly. if you're in Paris, you can't find a green mountain. And exactly. Okay. And you can find uh, some peace of uh, mind, calm, and stuff like that. So. Okay. And the last question. I, S, E, E, three words. Sorry, three letters. <laughs> I'm going to get it right. What would your MSC be in three words? 
innovation strategy entrepreneur. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it would be a bit be easy. <laughs> Yeah, it would be basically international uh, exploration and creativity. International exploration, creativity. Is that Jane? Maybe you want to add one last? Uh, no, I think that really does recap uh, <laughs> the, the, the spirit of, uh, of the ISE program. Perfect. Well, let's move on to extra time then. Next to time, I did two last minutes in which you can conclude uh, on this interview. So, Dina, maybe you want to mention something that we haven't said yet, or maybe you want to add something, or maybe you want to highlight, sorry, something that we've said already, or maybe mm -hmm. you just want to tell the students there to apply. Don't hesitate. It's now, and uh, Grenoble Ecole Management needs you. I don't know. You tell me. It's now or never. Uh, I'll tell the new students that will apply uh, that if you love strategy, if you love innovation, if you want to be an entrepreneur or not, apply to this program. You're going to really have fun. Uh, don't forget to have fun because that's a very big uh, thing of this program. And if you need anything, you can always contact me, Dina Oseirian on LinkedIn. All right. And, and don't forget then, and don't be scared of failing or failure and just try again. It's fine to be scared of failing, of failing, but have a good resilience because you're getting up at the end, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Dina. Lisa Jane. How to recap? This program, I, I think, is, is extremely challenging. Um, <laughs> Dina is, is very modest. She's, uh, she's done some exceptional work and really uh, made the most of the opportunities here. Uh, and I think that's what's really important in this program. And it's the entrepreneurial spirit that comes across here when it's you get out of this program what you put in. And if you've got an objective, uh, everybody will help you move towards it. All right. So it's like, like Dumbledore said, help <laughs> will be given for those who ask for it. Definitely. It's what it is. Fine. So it's like awkward. Thank you very much, Lisa Thank Jane. You. Thank you, Dina, for answering all my questions. If you're looking for a, an innovative, strategic, entrepreneurship, some kind of an awkward school with McGonagall as a program director. <laughs> well, it's all at Grenoble Ecole de Management for this MSc Innovation Strategy and Entrepreneurship, ISE. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon on Campus Channel.